Archaeological discoveries truly amaze and perplex. Kind of like when the Egyptologists unearthed this ancient menagerie. Or this ancient European found buried in China. Two billion year old water. I'm Dr. Greg Holland and I'm part of an international team that has recently discovered water that may be 2.7 billion years old. Caves and water go together like peas and carrots. These dark places are frequently moist environments and rainwater seeps through rock all the time, creating underground rivers and lakes. However, what scientists discovered inside this Canadian mine simply boggled their minds. Yes, there was water inside this mine, as expected. But they didn't realize that the water stagnating inside there predates the evolution of multicellular life on the friggin' planet. The water was discovered deep within an Ontario mine in Timmins. The age was calculated by analyzing evidence of elements identified in the water, such as helium and xenon. It was a gold mine for scientists because it was the oldest water ever discovered and gave some light on what early Earth would have been like. Although the water contains a few trace elements, it's generally non-toxic. However, drinking this water ain't such a good idea, because having existed for millennia, the liquid has accumulated so much minerals that it has eight times the salt content of seawater. World's Oldest Art Probably one of humankind's greatest mysteries is how did we humans come to make and learn how to appreciate art? How did the creative process evolve with our species? How did we stop from making rudimentary cave wall drawings and start making true art that didn't involve our feces? Well, this very recent discovery attempts to answer how, and more importantly, when. Recently, a scientist found the world's oldest art in a cave in Borneo, an island in Indonesia. The figurative art could be dated back to over 40,000 years. They're older man-made images, but they only show lines and abstract patterns. However, they seem to depict wild cattle painted on the walls using iron oxide, or ochre because it's orange in color. Sue O'Connor, an archaeologist, said that the art tells us about how it was more of a symbolic tradition rather than being regionally unique. Did these ancient people really leap forward in artistic expression? Or are we, like the true art connoisseurs that we are, just looking for too much from a simple painting? The underground city of Darren Kuyu. What thing can you find in your basement? Old yearbooks, broken down furniture, bodies, perhaps the remains of a few dead spiders? What if, and just for funsies, what if, that an entire forgotten underground city was just sitting beneath your house? Pretty unlikely, right? Well, that's just what a man discovered in 1963 when he decided to smash his basement wall with a sledgehammer. The house, located in the Turkish village of Darin Kuyu, was mobbed by archaeologists when a tunnel was discovered behind the smashed wall, which led to a series of more tunnels connecting a variety of halls and chambers. It was a large underground facility that had been abandoned by its inhabitants and had gone unnoticed until that fateful swing of the hammer. The anonymous Turk, whose name has not been revealed, uncovered a massive underground metropolis, up to 18 levels tall, 280 feet deep, and large enough to shelter 20,000 people. Must have been a major transformation for that man. Darren Kuyu is now one of Cappadocia's most popular tourist attractions, hence it's no longer considered an unknown world. However, one could be on the other side of your basement wall just waiting to be discovered. Or there could be nothing, so don't go smashing walls down there. Largest snake ever. The Sarahan snake smashes the record. That's a big snake. This is a huge snake. The Sarajan coal mine in Colombia is a typical coal mine, churning out about 30 million tons of coal each year. However, a shocking discovery turned the place into an important research site for scientists. In truth, the coal mine is one of the world's top fossil sites, offering a glimpse into a tropical rainforest 60 million years ago. Scientists nearly missed the Sarajan fossils until an undergraduate discovered a remarkable amount of sandstone impressions of fossil leaves. His discovery prompted an expedition that discovered several new species. This includes the largest snake ever discovered. Titanoboa, an ancient snake from the time after the dinos died, challenges our understanding of what a snake can be. This gigantic snake was 48 feet long, longer than a school bus and could probably eat one, and at the top of the monster eat monster food chain as well. In the swamp and hunted crocodiles and big turtles. Just imagine, if there weren't people working in these mines, we wouldn't know that such an amazing animal ever existed. Also terrifying. World's Best Preserved Mummy Back in 1968, Chinese road workers were working on a road project when they unearthed something amazing. Just beneath their feet was an ancient tomb, and what was waiting for them inside that tomb was to be one of the most important archaeological discoveries in history. 
The workers didn't know it at the time, but what they stumbled upon was the tomb of Xinjui, the Marquis of Dai, also called the Lady Dai. When she was alive, she was the wife of a chancellor of the Changska Kingdom. Her tomb not only contained her remains, but also around 1400 artifacts dating back to her time period. That's not what's shocking here though, oh no, it was Lady Dai herself, or her mummy for that matter. Zin's body was remarkably well preserved in an unknown fluid inside the coffin. Her skin was soft and moist, with muscles that still allowed for her arms and legs to flex at the joints. All her organs and blood vessels were also intact, with small amounts of type A blood being found in her veins. There was also hair on her head, with a wig pinned with a hair clasp on the back of her head. There was skin on her face and her eyelashes, and nose hair still existed. The tympanic membrane of her left ear was intact and her finger and toe prints were distinct. Needless to say, when compared to the mummies we're all used to seeing, Lady Di was definitely a diva and a looker. The Franklin Expedition The Franklin Expedition was meant to be the final exploration of the Northwest Passage, the sea route linking Europe and Asia through the Canadian Arctic. Instead, the expedition ended in a disaster. The two ships, HMS Erebus and HMS Terror, were lost with all hands. The clues to why this happened were few and mysterious. The expedition was well equipped for a long stay in the Arctic, so it remains a mystery why then it in such a devastating failure. But uh, we're not here to talk about exactly what went wrong, but rather the aftermath of this disastrous quest. Many teams were sent out to find out where the members of the expedition were. Clues of the crew's whereabouts were scattered everywhere, leaving a clear indication of the path they took. The path led to a small cemetery on Beachy Island, and it was here where the expedition members were found, buried in the frozen ground. When exhumed, all were in perfect preservation, if you don't mind the horrific expressions permanently etched on their faces. Which leaves me wondering, what other surprises are we going to discover buried under the frozen earth? Lifelike Statues 1974, a group of Chinese farmers were drilling a well in their fields when they unearthed something totally unexpected. Although they didn't know it yet, lying beneath their feet were 7,000 foot troops. Also, there were horses and chariots, but not real ones. They were truly lifelike statues. This turned to be the first Chinese emperor's terracotta army, built that the emperor still has his army to protect him even in the afterlife. Scholars were still perplexed by the huge variation of facial expressions and features. Was each warrior designed to be a one-of-a-kind, potentially a replica of a real person? Or were standard components assembled in the style of Mr. Potato Head? How could they have known? Short explanation is that it's in the years. University College London archaeologist Andrew Bevan and a few of his colleagues analyzed 30 warriors' ears shot at the mausoleum of the first Qin Emperor in China to check if there were any variations. To their surprise, no two ears were the same, implying that the figures are based on real people. It's gonna take some time to find out. That's almost 13,000 years to go. The land's also been acquired by the Chinese government since the discovery, and the monuments remain today. People believe that the statues are cursed and that anyone who tries to destroy them would meet with a terrible fate. Mummified Cats and Scarabs Ancient Egyptians were the most fervent cat lovers in history. No offense to today's cat parents. But then again, would you go as far as the ancient Egyptians as to how they treat their cats, especially after they die? Inside a 4,500-year-old tomb recently uncovered in the Sagara Necropolis on the outskirts of Cairo was a literal clouder of cats, all of them expertly mummified. Aside from the dozen or so mummified cats, a hundred gilded wooden cat sculptures and a bronze figure of the goddess of cats herself, Bastet, was found within the tomb. While the cats are easily the most spectacular mummies found in the tomb, the true treasure discovered within the tomb were mummified scarab beetles, which were equally revered to the ancient Egyptians. A limestone sarcophagus had two big, expertly mummified scarabs, and another housed a larger collection of the treasured bugs. Other discoveries include cow, falcon, and lion statues, as well as sarcophagi containing mummified cobras and crocodiles, a regular mummy menagerie. The Sarcophagi at Notre Dame A few years back, people all over the world, but most especially the people of France, were devastated to find out the age-old cathedral of Notre Dame burned to the ground. Of course, such a beloved historical landmark will never be abandoned into ruin, so renovations were quickly sent into motion. And it was during this renovation when they discovered something truly remarkable. Unearthed beneath the ancient graveyard of the old church were two extraordinary lead sarcophagi containing the bodies of two individuals. At the time of the discovery, no one really knew who the two persons were, but it was assumed that they were either high-ranking politicians or members of rich families at the time, as it was well known that these people had the influence and the money to fund church burials. Those were definitely not for everyone at the time. 
Well, they got it partially correct. Just recently, one of the coffins did indeed contain the body of a noblewoman who likely died from a chronic illness. The other coffin, however, contained a high-ranking clergyman who, according to the inscription on his sarcophagus, lived a sedentary life. A European in China Nowadays, finding Europeans in China is pretty common, dime a dozen. The country is, after all, a veritable business hub, as well as a go-to destination for not only European tourists, but also a vast number of nationalities as well. However, white folk were never really frequent visitors in ancient China, which made this discovery a bit more perplexing. 1999, a tomb was discovered in China containing the 1,400-year-old remains of Yu Hong. Yu Hong was not Asian, but European. Taoyuan, where the tomb was discovered, marks the easternmost spot where someone of Hong's genetic lineage has been discovered. Yu Hong belonged to an ancient genetic line that descended from Western Eurasia, and his tomb displays this. The site is characteristic of most tombs in Central Asia from the period, and its artwork is done in Asian styles. Despite that, the images of Hong and his family show European characteristics, like straight noses and blue eyes. See you all next time!